What up players, it's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Today we're gonna paint this carrying servitor. Mornfang Brown. You need that. Zandri Dust. Also, these are in no particular order. Carrack Stone. Steel Legion Drab. Balthazar Gold. Agrax Earthshade. Rekarth Flesh. The Fang. Abaddon Black. Lead Belcher. Rust Gray. And that's all you need. So here we go, we're gonna get started. You can see that this is the carrying servitor for the Quartermaster in the Death Corp Creed, the Quartermaster's retinue. So if you order the Quartermaster's retinue off Forge World, you get the Quartermaster and three servitors. One of them is this guy, and I'll also show you how to paint the other two as well. So in the fluff and the fiction, these guys follow around the Quartermaster. So if the Quartermaster is going around, Oh, and we're starting with more Fang Brown. We're going to just paint up all of this guy's robes. If the Quartermaster's job is to go around and execute anybody who is even slightly wounded in order to get their gear to rearm and re-equip the other uh, newer soldiers, then he needs his little pack mules with him, his little assistants. So this is one of them, and he is... Uh, such a fantastic sculpt for a servitor. Like most servitors you see are kind of retain their human shape. If you go to the Games Workshop website and you look up the Tech Marine with the servitors or if you just search for the servitors themselves, you'll see that they look just like big beefy guys with maybe a robot arm or half of a robot face and um, different weapons and stuff. But uh, this guy looks like he's almost completely all shrunken and shriveled and made of augmented bits. You can see that he's got like a little receipt maker on, on the back of his, like right by his hip on his right. And uh, I imagine that that's kind of like how he tabulates the amount of gear that he's holding. So uh, I love that. The Fang. Next we're going to paint the uniforms. Uh, he's clearly breathing through that little rebreather in the front. He's got a little oxygen tank or some kind of tank on his back and <clears throat> tubes going into his hood. Now something you're going to notice also about this sculpt which is so cool and so amazing and just like a little detail that uh, I'm really happy the sculptor put in was that if you look at his hood on the left, on, on, on the uh, little eye hole, his left eye hole is actually a double-headed eagle. So where his left eye is popping out of is like a double-headed eagle. Don't know why I think that is so awesome, but I, I really do. Kind of shows his allegiance to the Imperium uh, right there. Both of his arms have been replaced by these carrying limbs. And you can see that at the front there's no he has no fingers, so he can't articulate any kind of uh, precise movement. He's just there basically to carry and I think that's just so awesome. Like all of the little little bits on his, the way the augmented arms look, they're so detailed. And it looks like, I, I'm not sure, but if you look right by his head, right over there on the right side, you can see, see the back of it there. That looks like a video recorder, like a picked, or what they call a, a picked recorder. And uh, I, I wonder if that is meant to like, uh, just record uh, visually, take pictures of what he's doing, where he's going, stuff like that for review later or something. But I, I don't know why that's just, whoever sculpted this, thank you. Because this piece of work is just so awesome. And in, you know, a game, Mornfang Brown again, <clears throat> in a game where so many of the models look just so similar and 
um, without detail, especially like, I mean, Games Workshop can only do so much in the metal and plastic, but I think about like the Necrons, like there's only one real sculpt, right? Or even the Cadian Guardsmen, They're, they all kind of look very similar. Um, there's no real individuality in them. Oh, gotta use my cork base now. And so to see so much detail and character and just really interesting, evocative, as Sean Gailey likes to say, details pop out. It's just a real pleasure. So Abaddon Black and Lead Belcher is how I make my Dark Iron for a lot of the Deathcore Krieg, as most of you who follow my Deathcore Krieg painting tutorials know. And the way I like to mix them is maybe two or three parts black to one part of lead belcher. So however much lead belcher I'm putting on my wet palette, I'm gonna add in uh, at least twice as much black. And that's to create more of a, a, a black look to the iron rather than a silver look. We don't want a, a dark silver look, we want an almost, almost black kind of silver. So this is for the two helmets. And something that I noticed right about now, I remember painting it and thinking to myself right at this time, like, oh, this helmet that he's got on his left, that he's carrying uh, on his left, so when you look at it, our right, is a grenadier helmet, which you can tell because right under the double-headed eagle on the front of the helmet, there's a little, like, parchment um, banner. So, if I can hold him up in focus, you'll see, like, Right on, right underneath the double-headed eagle facing us is like a little, a little banner. And only the grenadiers have that. So now we're gonna just paint the silver bits. So I'm painting the picked feeder, picture capture machine, otherwise known as a camera. The little tube where he gets his oxygen. Of course, his augmented arm limbs. One of the interesting things about Warhammer 40k in, in the fluff, in the fiction too, is that with these augmented servitors or uh, altered humans like the tech priests, the uh, mechanicum workers and stuff, you can never really tell because of their robes how much of them is still human and how much of them has been uh, altered and replaced by machinery. And I, I love that, that mystery of the robes kind of covering the entire body and especially like the, the bigger and the, the more oversized these robes are, like this guy's, his robes are just so large compared to his frame like it makes you wonder like how much of him under there is still human because of that i've decided to paint his face in a very warm human flesh colored uh, tone and not to make it look all sickly and gross and diseased but i, I wanted to kind of create a uh, an interesting like kind of contradiction to him this tube going down the back here and the contradiction is that he's got some like nice healthy skin tone like but only where you can see his face under the hood and uh, the rest of him looks like it's all replaced by this oily greasy disgusting machinery I know that might kind of go um, contrary to like most grimdark stuff says that any exposed skin is going to be pale and sickly and disgusting and gross and um, I decided just to go against that because it kind of deepened, for me, it deepens the mystery. Like, why is he hiding his face? Um, if it's, if, it, if he's got like, like maybe if he took that hood off, he would have a very, you know, in human terms, like attractive face. And that's the, uh, the great irony is that like his entire body has been replaced by machinery, maybe not even by his choice. Like most servitors in the fluff of the story have been, have, are like convicted criminals or um, they're people that were not deemed fit to live in society so their bodies have been 
donated to the Mechanicum to become servitors. So I think it's interesting that, you know, you do add in your own little personal flourishes that this guy was unwillingly against his will given to become a servitor and they replaced parts of him that they thought would not be suitable or appropriate to his job. Russ Gray next and they replaced it with uh, robotics but there was no need to replace his face so they've left him with his face which is actually quite handsome. <laughs> uh, grim I think to me that's grim dark. That is more grim dark than having like a sickly looking pale disgusting skin tone show up where his face is supposed to be. Like enhance the mystery, you know. And of course, if you're playing with this guy and you, or, or if this guy's in in your army and you're across the field and you look at him, you don't see that. You're not gonna see. You're not gonna get that impression. What you're gonna see is like a really awesome looking half man, half machine thing. But that's like a little, just a little interesting piece of of fiction that I can keep alive in my head. So besides this guy, you've also got uh, two other servitors that follow the quartermaster around, and each one is so unique and so different. You've got one that's kind of like a record-keeping servitor that has like his hands replaced by like um, kind of like a, a, a printer, and he's printing on all these parchment pieces. Um, or is that another servitor that's kind of like that? I, I gotta look at it again, but there's all these reams of parchment coming out of this guy and it's just basically records of of everything that he's seeing and all of the, the casualties and and everything. And he's got like this huge like board on his back that kind of looks like a, a bulletin board or something with all these with even more things posted, papers and and whatnot. So most guys you see, servitors or um, figures you see in Warhammer 40k that have all of these parchment papers and purity seals and stuff all of the papers are supposed to be like prayer scrolls and um, uh, like scripture and very religious based stuff but this kind of looks like one of the few guys in in the war game Bugman's Glow next for the skin that um, the papers actually are Kind of tabulating or calculating the amount of information and data which is just on the battlefield so he's cool and then you've also got a servitor that's like a medic servitor so i mean i'm gonna go go back to the forge world website and look up ooh, here we're painting his face uh look up what each of the servitors are meant to be doing but those are the impressions that i get when i just look at them look at the figures all by themselves and uh, again, kudos to the sculptor. Screaming Skull next to highlight the uh, flesh. All right, guys, I'm eating this banana roll right now, banana bread. Oh, it's so good. Oop, jump. Okay, Abaddon Black. So these wires, I decided to paint in black. Um, I decided not to do them in a bright green or a bright red. Uh, I might decide to go back later. Sorry, again, for the focus. Still trying to learn what the optimal distance is to hold the figure away from the camera. Oh, I really need a camera with autofocus. Some, <laughs> somebody suggested doing a crowd uh, crowdfunding Thing to get a new camera <laughs> and I, was, I thought that was pretty cool and my lady boss is like yes yes you need a new camera and I'm like I know I can't afford one uh, we'll see so looks like this guy's getting along and you can see kind of what I was talking about with his uh, face kind of popping out there. Both is our gold next. There's only a couple gold pieces but we're gonna paint them and I think they're basically just the double-headed eagle so far. When I go back I might decide to do a couple more gold pieces but for now the the helmet double-headed eagles are gonna be it. 
But it looks like, yeah, we might do a... A gold, um... Gold details around maybe the, the picked capture. Or, uh... Some other pieces. The tough thing is that there wouldn't be much gold on this guy because he's barely—he's just a very functional Zandrine dust. Next, he's just a very functional. He feel, fulfills a very functional role in the army, right? He's not does not have any ornamentation other than what he's specified to do, which is just walk around and carry clothes around the battlefield and equipment. Banana bread. Oh. oh yeah, so I'd also like to say that I realized when I was painting that probably a lot of you out there aren't gonna have this figure. And I was wondering like, well why would anybody wa wanna watch this video? They don't have these figures. And then I was thinking, probably a lot of people don't have a lot of the figures in my videos. But one of the main reasons why I like to post these long videos is in, in case you ever do get a video, you can see how I did it. And also because I know when I'm painting, I like to listen to podcasts or, or have music on or something. And um, sometimes I also like to have, I, I used to love so much the girl painting videos, awesome paint job videos, uh, by painted. I used to love having them on while I was working. Steel Legion Drab next. So um, if that's one of the reasons why you have me on, to kind of keep you company and get like my insights and stuff, which a lot of people have said in the past, uh, like Devil's Prodigy, my good friend. And a lot of people have said that they watch my videos just to uh, have that kind of presence and, and motivation, then uh, thank you. Thanks for keeping me on and thank you for playing my videos and supporting. Even if you don't comment, oh yeah, he also has sandals, so let's paint those Steel Legion Drab. Even if you just put my video on, uh, even if you are my serial hater that is always disliking my videos, uh, thank you for thank you for taking the time to watch because it, it does take time to film and edit these things. Rackhard Flesh next. So, uh, thank you. Okay, maybe some of you guys can help me. On the left of his belt here, he's got this little, it looks like a carving. And I was thinking, well, maybe I'll paint it. Um, maybe I'll paint it in gold and make it like a gold um, little carving. And it's basically like a, it looks like it, an, a, a monk or an angel or something like a hooded figure surrounded by like a little uh, frame. I have no idea what it is. No idea at all. So maybe it's mentioned in the uh, description of the Quartermaster. I'll have to double check on, on Forge World, but um, I decided to paint it Agrax Earthshade next. I decided to paint it in um, kind of like a wood grain to maybe kind of be like a, a devotional, like a little prayer thing. That he carries with him. Okay, this is the most fun part of the video, I think. So we're just slapping this Agrax Earthshade on, and we want to get it in all these folds and creases. And because also this project, this Death Corp Krieg commission project that I'm still going on, has um, all of the figures on these resin bases, these battlefield trench work bases, I decided to paint. Uh, you know, do a lot more dirt and grime and, and battlefield uh, wear and tear than I normally would. So I'm doing a little bit more Agrax Earthshade than I would normally do it, and that's just so it can get into the creases and the folds. Some of you might hear it. those are the Lady Boss's lovebirds in the back. They're singing. So sorry about that. Uh, if it's distracting. Yeah, I hear <laughs> every time one of them che cheeps, I hear it on the on the vocal uh, levels thing. So sorry about that. All right, we're just getting it everywhere in all the creases and all the folds, and 
there you have it. So I'm going to let that dry and then we're going to come back for part two uh, as soon as we can. And uh, thanks again for watching. Thank you for the comments and the likes. I really appreciate it. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Latest players!